Have you been falling off your spiritual practice? Hey, me too. And it's okay. It happens, okay? Okay, we're living the human earthly life and it's not always easy to stay on top of those things, okay? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. I wanted to talk about this because I feel like it's something that every person who is starting their spiritual journey or has been on a spiritual journey I'm laughing at how comedic these teeth look right here. <laughs> this is a Christmas gift. Um, how comedic, um, did I say comedic? How, can you tell Mercury is in retrograde? See, I literally just told myself I wasn't going to make any videos where I needed to share information until after Mercury in retrograde was over, and I clearly didn't listen to myself. And... I blame that on not doing my spiritual practice every day. Mm -hmm. That's just me trying to be funny. But I would just speak really slowly. You can put me on 1.25 playback speed if it helps you to receive the message faster. But I'm going to work on speaking a little slower. That way everything I mean to say, I will say and say in the way in which I mean to say it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking. If you are returning, I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking with me through this journey as I move you through the green of the, um, what do you call that phase when you're in the cocoon, the cocoon phase, as uh, we all prepare to emerge for this year as a butterfly that works for this year. I wholly believe that we are a new butterfly every year. So the new butterfly that I am about to be and still in those stages of preparing myself for and I kind of wanted to make a video about this as I was trying to say before I got all discombobulated <laughs> is that I feel any person, whether you're here and you're new to your spiritual journey or you've already been on one or you've been on one and didn't really feel like it was spiritual but maybe you're thinking maybe now it is or however it may be playing out for you in your reality that it's quite normal to fall off of your practice and I'm not saying this to give permission to like not try to get back on it. I'm simply saying that I think sometimes there may be this perception that those spiritual beings that you see who always look like they're so blissed out and they're always just at peace and always at oneness and nothing ever happens to them. But that's not true. Not in the slightest. We are still having an earthly uh, human experience and we're meant to have challenges and struggles because they help us to grow. And so some of those challenges are, okay, you developed a spiritual practice. You developed something that works for you. Now we're going to put things into your life that make it difficult for you to do that. And eventually you fall off of some of those things. Some of those things don't seem as important to you anymore because maybe you're not feeling some sort of certain type of way that you used to feel because you feel like those things helped you not feel that way, but then that feeling slowly comes back. All these ways that it can occur so that way you can sit back and realize one day like oh my god it's been this long since I've done this and for me I feel like sometimes that's reflected to me through observing other people or people having a projection of what they think that I do and then their projection technically should be true but it's not based on my knowing of the practices I would typically be doing and the realization that I currently am not doing them. So for me, personally speaking, if you're new or if you're not, either way I'm going to say it, when I was living out of my car, and I learned, I learned about some of this in myself last night because my partner and I were watching a Dick Gregory uh, video. Check, check him out on YouTube, just click on one, all of them hold some information, but everything he was speaking on, the three main things that are detrimental to us as humans, he was saying sleep deprivation is number one, which I highly prioritize sleep and highly value my sleep and need a lot of sleep and used to kind of get invalidated about needing so much sleep and people try to make me feel bad about needing so much sleep and trying to say there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with me or I should be able to process all this much sleep and I already know that I can and Second one being dehydration. People walking around severely dehydrated causing a lot of the sicknesses they experience. Um, and then not spending enough time in physical activity, but physical activity that's on an uh, uneven surface, like on the earth, so that way your brain can process what's occurring and you can connect to Gaia. 
because we were watching that video last night, it kind of brings me into my realization of some of the things I have been falling off of in my spiritual practice. Because when I was living out of my car, now we got back to that point, when I was living in my car, every I would wake up with the sun. He was talking about that as well. I'd wake up about an hour after the sun got up, I'd really get up and go and explore in nature throughout the day, talk to myself, talk to spirit, sing, just be a person, heal old trauma. I would be doing this all day long. Sometimes I'd share insights through videos on my channel and sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'd journal them, sometimes I'd just cry it out, sometimes I'd dance it out. However it felt right for me in that moment. And uh, maybe that's some projectorness in me too. But then, you know, slowly I would go back to my spot. This is when I was living in California. And then I would go watch the sunset and I would sit and it was like awesome. It was always different groups of people every day on the highway. They'd sit and they'd watch the sun set, which is amazing to do. I love watching the sunset. And then I'd go drive to my little rest stop area and go to bed. I would journal. I would sing. I would dream. I would manifest what I wanted things to be like. I would just kind of like, I was just being a human really at that point in time. But from there, I started to develop things that were really important and meaningful to me throughout the day sitting in meditation in nature, walking meditation in nature, singing, writing, not a lot of drawing, but you know, every person will be different, what comes to you. And so a lot of those things became very normal every day for me. And then when I moved into a home environment, not, it doesn't have to even be specific in like place, just like in a house, in four walls, more sedentary, more stationary. I began to notice that a lot of those things I'd stop doing because there's a new routine. There's a new way to put those things into place. And I didn't realize that I had really created a strong connection to my practice through the way in which I was living. Because before I was living out of my car, my practice was whenever I could do it. So th that was the first time I created something consistent. So now what I'm realizing is in those moments where someone thinks, oh yeah, I'm sure you meditate every day. And I'm like, I used to. <laughs> And then I'm sitting with myself like, yeah, Talisa, oh, what's, what's going on? Why aren't you? And taking the time to step back and like sit and like not be angry at myself or beat up myself or judge myself and understand like everyone's going to have that experience. What's important is to try and find a way to get back in it, on it, do it, shift it, change it however needs to for you to continue to receive your downloads and upgrades and activations. Because let me tell you, Every time I decide to go back down and sit and close my eyes and go into myself, into this world that I created inside of me, I literally go into my spine and go down these a slide and go into this world that I've created. Every time I go there, there's something so valuable for me there. Every time. So if, if that's the case, why don't I go every day? <laughs> well, okay, because maybe now when I wake up, I don't wake up with that mindfulness. I wake up and I rush to go brush my teeth and get ready to do this or get ready to do that and I'm not planning my days intentionally. And so what I'm basically expressing to you here is that what I'm doing now, and maybe if you're experiencing this too or feel that there are things you want to implement more of, what I'm trying to do now is not be hard on myself first of all and just be like, okay, we all go through this. This is where I decide that it's still valuable to me, that it's still worth it. I think someone's coming. Yeah, I think someone's behind me. That is still worth it. Someone's coming. And then from there, I say, okay, so when I wake up, what do I want to do? What do I like to do? Well, I dream every night. So I just brought my dream journal back in from the van because we were staying in the van for a while, so I had it in there. When I wake up, I want to write down my dream list. And maybe that's just the one thing I implement in one day. I'm not re-implementing everything. In one day and then the next day I used to say affirmations to myself in the mirror when I was brushing my teeth and doing my hair maybe I start doing that again a lot of this kind of ties to specifically from what for me personally because I'm going through some Saturday my first with my self-worth but I implement that then choosing a time throughout the day where I notice I'm most undisturbed or I'm most physically ready to meditate in the morning I'm so tired I just like don't want to, I just want a moment of stillness, think about my dream, write it down, move into my day, but maybe in the afternoon or even at night, it's quieter and I feel the energy is settled in the home, then I do it then. And for me, it's deciding about the things that are most important. I get a lot out of meditating. I get a lot from writing down my dreams and going back and looking at them. It also just writing down a dream strengthens your ability to retain future ones, singing. I really let go of singing as a, a, a 
have spiritual practice and it is for me dancing every time I go dog sit at my mom's house I always dance and like I notice that and maybe ask okay ask yourself this too whenever you have like you're always in this like normal mode of being but then when you have time to be alone and away from everyone and everything what do you choose to do what brings you joy and for me I always blast music on the TV and I'm dancing and I'm singing and I'm just expressing myself that is a very important part of my day and I don't really do it here because I don't always feel like I can fully be rowdy in this house or fully expressed because I'm honoring other people's spaces. This isn't my space or my domain. So I'm um, learning how to do it quietly in a new way, um, learning to be less apologetic for wanting to be that way, but that's just my own personal process and how I'm getting there, how I'm taking my time. But these are things that have been coming up and I know sometimes people well, I don't know, but I feel sometimes people think that if they're not staying consistent, and I know this for me personally, if I'm not doing something consistently every day, I feel that I've failed. And as you know, nothing just goes up and goes down. It goes up and down and around and up and back and right and left. So I'm learning that as well and um, taking my time to come back into some of those practices and just not beat up myself for it. And understand that I do find value in them. I took out my tarot deck the other day. I hadn't touched my oracle cards because I moved from upstairs, so I no longer have an altar. So yeah, lots of changes and shifts, but really take that time to sit and think about the ones that are really important to you, the ones that remind you of why you chose to wake up, why you chose to remember, why you chose to connect back to that highest part of yourself so that you can live a different life, so you can make a difference to the people around you. And that's all I'm going to say, because this video is getting a little long, so thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Um, what kind of questions do I have for you, or things I would like to share in the comments? If you feel like you judge yourself harshly, if you fall off your spiritual practice, let me know in the comments below, or like things that you find that you fell off of, that you re-implemented, that you found really important to re-implement. Shower time is really important for me. Sometimes I fall off of really taking the time to close my eyes and be in the shower, and I kind of rush through it. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for listening and receiving and honoring my need to speak slowly so that I wouldn't get all tongue-tied. I appreciate that. And as always, until I see you next time, I'm sending you peace.